Hi friends, it's Monica and let's talk about what I read in November. This past month, I read five amazing books, although some of them I did have some strong opinions about. I think it had a good mix of genres. I had some fantasy, historical fiction, and contemporary in there. But the first book that I did want to mention and I first read in this month was Lessons of Chemistry by Bonnie Kremis. This one is a historical fiction and I really did not know what to expect going into it but I did end up rating it 5 out of 5 stars. I love this author's writing and how she portrayed a no-nonsense direct female chemist in the 1950s. Our protagonist Elizabeth Zott works in an all-male chemistry lab and these men really just view her as a secretary but Elizabeth, she is very smart in her own right and all her co-workers actually approach her to solve their experimental questions. <laughs> However, enter the innovative scientist Calvin Evans who is the only one to acknowledge Elizabeth on her brilliance as well as her research on abiogenesis. But years later, Elizabeth now is a single mother and the host of a successful cooking TV show. Again, the thing that stood out to me the most was the writing. It's very quick and snappy and it really encapsulates how Elizabeth is as a person. And our protagonist is the type of person that breaks all the stereotypical things that are expected of women in the 1950s like being a housewife, raising the kids. No, she breaks all the rules and she doesn't care at all for the consequences. By the end of the book, Elizabeth does pave a path for other women who may be too scared to speak up. There are other themes in this book such as science versus religion, the patriarchy, misogyny, gender discrimination, and also the simple strength of being a woman. There is a TV show adaptation out on Apple TV with the same title and I did end up watching that miniseries. I really did like how they portrayed this book. They did make some changes but nonetheless I really did enjoy the adaptation. So if you are looking for a book that will really surprise you, shock you in all the ways that you are not expecting at all, I would highly recommend you to check out this historical fiction. Next up, I had a reread and it was A Court of Mist and Fear by Sarah J Maas. This was my third time rereading this book and I had an absolute blast rereading about the introduction to the inner circle again and all of the things that go down in this book. If you have not heard of this series, this is book two in the A Court or Thorns and Roses series and we are following Fira who is a human huntress who one day accidentally kills a fairy wolf which in turn has major consequences and she is whisked away to the fairylands by a handsome fae lord. This high fae lord really seduces her and Fira quickly finds out that there is a curse upon the fairylands and is a threat to her human family back in the mortal lands so she will do anything to fight tooth and nail to solve this huge curse. Akamath continues to establish the most beloved thing that I absolutely love in books is the found family trope and we also get to see Fira learn the truth and heal from the events of book one and under the mountain. To be honest, I really do think that Akamath is the strongest book in this series up to date and it honestly is such a pleasure to just pick this book back up again and to redevelop the characters that I care about. I am going to be continuing my massive Akatar reread as well as my Crescent City reread before House of Flame and Shadow comes out in January. Then I picked up a sequel to a very popular fantasy romance book which is Iron Flame by Rebecca Yaris. This is book two in the Empyrean series and I rated this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I also do have a full reading vlog for Iron Flame that is already uploaded. I think if you want to see my fresh reactions, it's really fun to watch how my opinion changes from when I first started reading this book to the end of the book and if you want to see that, that will be linked down below. This series is an adult fantasy and it is about a college for dragon riders. We're following 20 year old Violet Sorengale who is entering into her first year of this college. 
there is a fierce competition to bond a dragon and that in itself is very deadly and it doesn't help that Violet's mother is actually the general which paints a huge target on her back especially for the wing leader Zayden. Really briefly on my thoughts of Iron Flame, the YA-esque writing really took me by storm and not in a good way. I did not like the young adult type of writing and also the romance wasn't really hitting as it was in Fourth Wing. However, I really did like the great political workings as well as the greater world building that we get and I love the dragons so much. They have great personalities and it's really fun to see the dragons interact with each other as well with their writers. But I'm gonna stand by this. If there was a little bit more care and editing done to the romance and the overall plot, I think I would have liked this book a lot more. And honestly, I'm leaning on the fence towards not reading this book series any longer. I think I will make my final decision once we get like a description for book three, but right now I'm just like, um, is it going to be really worth my time to continue reading the series? Let's see. Then another sequel that I picked up was Us Against You by Frederick Bagman. This is book two in the Bear Town series and I read this one a four out of five stars. At the beginning of the series, we are set in a small town known as Bear Town in Sweden and at this small community, everyone lives and breathes hockey. Their junior ice hockey team is on the rise but after a pivotal event that strikes the town, their hockey team is now disbanded and we are seeing the fallout of the events of book one in Us Against You. There are really intense hockey rivalries, pranks going wrong, and we have a dead bear town resident on our hands by the end of this book. The author continues to write in his very unique style which really makes the characters feel alive and three-dimensional. One thing I would have liked to see a little bit more condensed in this book was the fallout from the events from book one. Although it is an integral part of the story and of many characters' journeys, it just felt a little bit dragged on. However, there are great mentionings of healing from trauma and there are new focuses and themes in the second book such as how politicians may be controlling the masses how media can really influence your opinion, and how homophobia is still prevalent. Overall, I think this sequel really did capture the same feel as book one, but not in the same capacity. I just think that I would have liked to see more concise writing. However, I am very excited to see how this series ends with book three called The Winners and to see where all of our characters end off. The last book I managed to finish was an adult contemporary and I'm talking about Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabriel Zevin and I rate this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This book is a full to the brim of video game cultural references. We also have a deep an intense exploration of friendship and love as well as this messy thing that we call life. <laughs> We're following two main protagonists, Sam and Sadie, who are friends from their childhood to adulthood over like a span of 30 years. And Sam and Sadie, they share a mutual love for video games. They create a video game together which launches them into fame and success. And we follow them throughout their lives, of which can be quite messy and not all the time storybook perfect. Both Sam and Sadie have their own unique life experiences. At Sam, he experiences chronic pain from a car accident, but he can be very driven and he can be stuck in his own ways. With Sadie, she has some issues with control in her life while also being brilliant and spearheading the video game projects with originality and flavor. When these two are in a room together, one or two things happens. They can either make a brilliant and great video game or it ends up in fights and blame. 
I really did like how this book showed the raw reality of how life is and that not everything is perfect, but the cyclic fights that Sam and Sadie go through was not really enjoyable to read about. There are a lot of different topics and themes that were touched upon in this book, such as power dynamics in a romantic relationship and platonic relationships, how the video game industry is very male dominated. I really did like the mention of how video games can be an escape for people to just relax and to play a game <laughs> and what video games are for those people that enjoy them. For me, it's books for my own personal escape so I really didn't like that being mentioned. This is definitely a book that you want to pick up for nostalgic reasons or if you're simply curious about video games in general, I would highly recommend you to check out Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow. Those are all the books I read in November. I really hope you enjoyed watching my reviews for these books and comment down below what you read this past month. With all that being said, don't forget to give me a huge thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below, and don't forget to ring the bell to not miss any future uploads. And I'll see you all in my next one. Bye!